Hello friends, it's Rosa Scheib, your moderator to F Society RSC Podcast, and this is my live reaction to the second episode of Season 3 of Mr. Robot, uh, Undo. They're definitely keeping the horror theme going on. Um, I'm really liking the stillness of this episode. Um, you know, Elliot is a lot of times, even though he has these monologues and dialogues with the, the audience, he's a very still character. And to see a stillness kind of like seep through the rest of the characters uh, was unnerving. Uh, the tension of this uh, episode was um, ratchet up. Uh, real threats and false threats. Here we're beginning to see who has the power and who doesn't have the power. Price is back. Uh, White Rose is in um, full form, or I should say, White Rose is as the the Minister Zong. I think is how you pronounce his name. Was here. Joanne made an appearance. R.I.P. Her. Um, didn't think they were gonna go that graphic with the uh, autopsy, but given the nature of the show, I guess they want to make it very uh, final that she is a character that is dead. Be interesting to see how Tyrell Wellick uh, reacts to that. Um, what else? Don't like Santiago. Never like Santiago. Thinks he works for the Dark Army, but didn't realize the level of scumbag that he was. Willing to put uh, the orphan child, if you will, into uh, social services. No sign of Trenton, Moby, or Leon as of yet. It'd be interesting to see when and if they pop up this season. I think they are going to pop up, but when? Are they going to be like some kind of really crazy jack-in-a-box? Not, um, not sure. Mr. Robot himself is getting uh, scarier and scarier. The way he um, threatened Darlene, the way he threatened Krista. It's interesting to see how different people are able to tell when Elliot is Mr. Robot. Of course, Krista has summoned Mr. Robot. That's the best way to think of it. If you fit with the horror theme, it seems, for this season. After all, if you look in the background of the show with Elliot walking, uh, Dom, Dom made, made appearance back. It's official. Darlene is snitching. Uh, she is out because she is going to get information on Elliot or Tyrell Wellick, really. Um, I think that's why she's doing it, because she wants to get Tyrell Wellick so her and Elliot can be free. Um, <clears throat> what was I going to say? Uh, lost my train of thought there. Oh, like the garbage pileup is getting higher and higher. You're seeing e-coin all over the place, but no Bitcoin, which was suggested by Philip Price. It was something that China was backing, which if you're unfamiliar with Bitcoin, um, you know, it's a cryptocurrency coin. Uh, it's been around for nine years, almost it's going to be nine years come this January. Uh, the paper itself, the idea of it, it's been around for 10 years. Um, will be 10 years um, next year. And China does, China has a weird relationship with Bitcoin, but it has like a lot of the mining and infrastructure in, in um, cryptocurrency. A lot of it is in, uh, in Bitcoin, is in China. So it's interesting how in the world of Mr. Robot, the currency war is positioning China backing Bitcoin and the rest of the world, I guess, because uh, the influence of evil corp and when Western powers are backing e-coin. But that's very tension, tenuous as uh, White Rose has demonstrated that she wants um, the Congo so that they could, I guess, move their operation. Whatever the Washington Township plant is, some have speculated what it is, and I think now that we have the second episode, I can kind of get into some of the theories people are bantering around. Some of them are rehashes or reforming of existing theories and incorporating it into this new theory. Some of it is theories that have been around for a while, so it'll be interesting to talk about it. Um, wish it was still a MacGuffin. Maybe it's still a MacGuffin. I think there's a MacGuffin, and I will talk about that on the theory episode after I. Um, so basically, I will post a review of this, more of my thoughts on this 
particular episode and then get into some of the theories that people are talking about and um, I have a different kind of viewpoint and maybe why Pulp Fiction might have been um, another reason why Pulp Fiction might be it a little bit of a hint or influence of the show. Um, I don't think it was like I stated um, when I talked about the Washington Township plant, um, that theory about it being a MacGuffin. I don't think it's an accident that Sam Isbell placed Pulp Fiction in the world of Mr. Robot. A lot of these films are always, always have some kind of hints or influence on the show. Angela wasn't very much in the show itself uh, directly, but she was spoken of, which makes me wonder exactly what her connection really is to Price. It seems Price was very perturbed by the fact that White Rose has a handle on Angela and what that means, and also threatened to kill Angela, basically. May still kill Angela. May kill everybody. Everyone's on the choppy block, as uh, Joanne Wellick has demonstrated. Uh, what else is on? Um, the splitting of Elliot and Mr. Robot is clear that Mr. Robot no longer, as he stated to Krista, can get up and go and do whatever he wants. There, there seems to be a period of time that he can do it, which makes me wonder exactly how much sleep Elliot is getting, and maybe that might be affecting his ability to either resist Mr. Robot or the effectiveness of his, the drugs that he's taking. Because he looks more more haggard and tired as uh, he's progressing further into his job as part of the recovery uh, program. It's interesting to see that even though he's trying to somehow stop stage two, make sure it doesn't happen, and help E Corp uh, rebuild uh, their infrastructure, and his rethinking about it, he still thinks he can save the world as he goes throughout his day, it seems like... He does a little programming, and then lunchtime he takes out an executive of E Corp because they're into some kind of malicious um, activity. And one by one, they're trotted out by the FBI and the authorities. Um, him and Darlene um, are clearly on not on the same page, same footing, or I should say, Ellie and Darlene are kind of on the same page a little bit in the sense that. Elliot believes Darlene is a trigger for him, that he, you know, he wants to be with Darlene. He, he feel, I think he does feel bad the fact that he's not communicating with his sister, but he obviously, you know, he has a problem expressing himself, but he's more concerned about Mr. Robot. Darlene, on the other hand, had to contend with Mr. Robot when she planted the bug in his home, which, of course, Mr. Robot figured out and was able to trace back uh, to the FBI safe house. Now, whether or not he realizes that uh, Darlene's in an FBI safe house because she's in a basement apartment remains to be seen. Obviously, the safe house, in a sense, is compromised. Or at least he, Elliot knows that his, or as far as the FBI knows, Elliot knows that his computer is compromised. Uh, again, don't don't click on links into your um, e unknown links, if you will, in the email. Come on. And then download the file. Ugh. Silly, 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 silly. Um, I do think that the the safe house was already compromised beforehand, possibly by the Dark Army. Uh, Santiago men mentioned that the that there's a different FBI team that is on the Dark Army, so maybe that that uh, what was it called? The electric company uh, van that was outside there, the safe house. Uh, that might have been the other FBI team. Um, watching them, which is interesting. Who watches the watchers? Um, what else? It's it's interesting how Philip Price he he had that big old speech about him being the most powerful person in the room, and it's clear now that that other person he talked about that one or other one or two other people might be more powerful than him. That's kind of confirming that White Rose is one. Um, and that she's willing, for petty sake reasons really, to uh, continue stage two. Because it seems like stage two was never really supposed to happen at all. It was just a pressure point to get Philip Price to uh, help China get the Congo, which in essence helps White Rose continue on whatever the project that she's continuing on. It could be an intersection where White Rose and um, the backing of China, whatever that project is, um, intersects. 
And that's why she has so much um, power within the government and is able to do what she needs to do. And again, it goes back to Cobalt, which we'll talk about. I had a theory very early on when the Washington Township plant was talked about and about Cobalt um, last season, what that could be, like, that might be another theory being brought back up, I guess you can say. Um, we'll get into that when I talk about that during the theory episode. But overall, the tension in this episode was just, oof. Um, it looks like a lot of people are going to get it. But they, there's a couple things that I wish they had explained. Is One, there's a six-day blackout, right? But there was no riots in the city of New York. Two, what's the rest of the world looking like? They've been, because we are in New York, they're very heavily focused on New York, but I'm not seeing anything in the television backgrounds or anything like that um, that would hint the state of the rest of the world. Is everything as bad as it is in New York with all the garbage and people um, cooking food in the street, bartering, paying to have somebody, like two e-coin, paying them to um, burn garbage. The fact that some places are just accepting e-coin because the dollar's tanking trash ecoin is more valuable than on um, the dollar as we saw on Irvin's car car as he was selling the car for you know 5000 or 5500 for uh cash uh 5000 for ecoin or 5000 ecoin um what else wondering how much of a time difference it is between the first episode and now if there's been like a couple weeks, a few weeks, you know, Elliot is working for uh, Evil Corp, or I guess he's referring it now to E Corp, his proper name, I guess. Uh, how long he's been there? Has it been a couple weeks, a few weeks? Uh, we know maybe possibly five weeks altogether. Not sure. Scott Knowles is in jail for the murder of his wife, so Joanne kind of got her way there. I not really sure what her motivations were completely but since she's dead we're i guess we're not going to completely know um it's very shocking and i wonder if what that will do when tyrell wellick finds out i mean he's in a very isolated position right now helping elliot you would be interested to see how if dark army is able to keep that information from him and if elliot slash mr robot does the same what those ramifications will be. Uh, that's really it. There, there were some things that were stated, but it wasn't heavily plot driven. It's just like moving the pieces along, as we're seeing like little, everyone's moving along the pawns and stuff, and seeing how everyone's moving their positions on the board, and that's very fascinating because there's some people who we think were in a position of strength and maybe they're not and there's some people that have positions of strength but do they really it's interesting to see how the machinations of all the different players are going on but that's it for this episode um there's not really much to discuss i just want to say that there seems to be like a horror-esque theme this season you know first season was like a mystery if you will a caper like who is mr robot what is FB Society doing? What is it all about? The second season was about the getaway, trying to get away with it, and some of the fallout and the consequences of what happens when you try to get away with it. And the third season, it seems like the dissension into like this kind of a slow, gradual dystopia is happening in the background. In this horror play, this of uh, I'm not sure which genre. It still seems slasher to me. Like any moment now that like Mr. Robot, you know, is going to start stabbing people right and left or something like that. But um, definitely it just has a very horror-esque feel to it. And I am enjoying it. It's making things very tense and making me doubt and look for the boogeyman all over the place. Which to some extent is like dark army really. But that's it. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Logging off for this chat for now. And until next time, friends.